This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. How can Battle of the Network Stars be considered a legitimate sport? From the Pop Culture Bunker, I'm Mindy. And I'm Mark. You can check out our audio podcast, How I Got My Wife to Read Comics, on iTunes or on our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. As the broadcast TV industry desperately tries to hold on to their remaining viewers, they are going back to tried and true formats. Yes. And that's why ABC has a primetime game show block that's actually doing pretty well. Mm -hmm. And they're cheap too, right? Right. Yeah. One of those formats is the non-athlete sports competition, such as Battle of the Network Stars, returning for a summer run on ABC in late June, which I'm sure is based on the success of, Amer of American Ninja Warrior on NBC. Mm -hmm. So there were a group of these shows back in the mid-1970s, starting with... Superstars! <laughs> Combined with ABC, NBC, and CBS, and it premiered in 1973, professional athletes would compete in sports other than their own. Basically a way for pros to get a free holiday to Hawaii or Mexico or wherever, wherever. in their off-season, and for weekend sports shows to have something new to broadcast. And in the first season, Joe Frazier nearly drowned during a swim meet because he couldn't swim. He said after, oh yeah, I don't know how to swim. Oh, jeez. And he's like, well, I, I, you never know until you try it. <laughs> <laughs> the show always ended, of course, with the obstacle course. Mm -hmm. And there were spinoffs with kids, celebrities, and super teams, where the World Series and Super Bowl teams would compete. <laughs> you know, you think that would be dangerous, <laughs> because, you know, yeah, what if one of them got injured? Yeah, and it, for one of them, it couldn't, it couldn't be the offseason for both of them, really. Yeah. So this ran on and off through 2003 on three different networks, and it was also resurrected briefly in 2009. I, I don't remember that. <laughs> in 1976, Almost Anything Goes premiered, also on ABC. Teams of ordinary people from U.S. towns would compete against each other. There were silly games like pie-throwing contests and an obstacle course. Regis Philbin co-hosted The Insanity, and there was a kid spinoff on Saturday mornings, and the show ran for two seasons. And then there's Battle of the Network Stars, which also premiered on ABC in 1976. It's a series of specials where stars from ABC, CBS, and NBC, remember only three networks then, <laughs> would compete in various sports. One person from each network would be voted as captain and make the call as to who did what sport. Because each person was limited to how many sports they could do. So even if you had a ringer, you couldn't use them that much. Mm -hmm. And you had to use everybody. Yeah, now that, of course, that wasn't set up ahead of time. Or oh, no, 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 no. And, of course, the whole thing was just a promotion for their various TV shows. Yes. And to give you an idea who, who was on it, the type of people on it, this was the first set of teams. For ABC... The, the the captain was Gabe Kaplan, Darlene Carr. Now, you think, who's Darlene Carr? Yes. Because most of these people, if you know 70s television, you will recognize. What's interesting here is once in a while they'd have somebody who was like some fresh new face who was doing a brand new, brand show, new show, but maybe got canceled by the time that Battle oh, of the Network geez. Stars was on. <laughs> Linda Carter, who was on the ABC version of Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman. at the time. Farrah Fawcett. Richard Hatch, Robert Hedges, Ron Howard, Hal Linden, Penny Marshall, and John Shuck. Okay, the CBS team. Yes. Telly Savalas. Yeah. Captain. Right. That's Kojak years. Yes. Okay. Adrian Barbeau, Gary Berghoff, Kevin Dobson, Pat Harrington Jr., Bill Macy, Lee Merriweather, Mackenzie Phillips, Loretta Swit, and Jimmy Walker. <laughs> I would hate to be on a team with Jimmy Walker. <laughs> NBC's team included Captain Robert Conrad, Melissa Sue Anderson, Karen Grassley, Tim Matheson, Ben Murphy, uh, Barbara Parkins, I think another one of those, <laughs> uh, Joanna Pettit, Kevin T. Ty, uh, Bobby True, and De Demon Wilson. It's interesting how many of these names, as just a few of them, you are still on TV today. Yeah. Yeah, but these these were like the big stars of the 1970s. Yes. Now, each team had eye candy. Yes. Linda Carter, Adrian Barbeau, who were always in the swim meets, of course. Yes. 
And SNL even made a parody promo called Celebrity Battle of the T's and A's. <laughs> The third place team would sit out the final competition, a tug of war, and of course there was an obstacle course in the mix. The show ran for 12 years with 19 specials. <laughs> Howard Cosell, the dean of ABC Sports, was the host. The show got a brief remix in 2003 when NBC did an intramural battle among NBC properties. By this point, the networks weren't willing to work together. <laughs> Bravo tried something similar in 2005 with Battle of the Network Reality Stars. The new version will have themes like cops versus sitcoms, with several of the original competitors returning. <laughs> yeah. Now, I remember watching the show as a kid. It's really the progenitor of reality TV, because captains would throw a fit sometimes after a certain event, and I'm sure some of this was staged, but I don't think all of it. <laughs> well, that's about like reality TV. <laughs> As usual, the networks overdid things, and the format went away for quite a while. Quite a while. Now, we've talked about American Ninja Warrior, which began as Sasuke in Japan in 1997. An incredibly difficult obstacle course with time rounds to start it, followed by even more difficult completion rounds. You had to actually yes. get to the end. Mm -hmm. Most seasons end with no actual victor. Only one person, Kazuhiko... Akiyama, a crab fisherman and massage therapist, has ever achieved total victory. <laughs> the hosts would always treat this as a serious competition, which made the show even more bizarre. Yes, because, you know, sometimes people would come on wearing costumes or, you know, <laughs> things like that. And I was surprised to find out in my research that Sasuke is still on the air. Well, I'm off to YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> G4, since out of business, started the American version in 2007, and the show, of course, is now on NBC. Mm -hmm. The American version, in my honest opinion, has been ruined by way too much up-close-and-personal stories prior to each competitor. Which is why, if you're going to watch the show, definitely watch it on the DVR so you can go, Z -Z -Z -Z, let's go to the competition. Well, you can definitely see it getting the um, NBC Olympics treatment. Oh, you know? oh yeah, yeah. I mean, everybody's got to have a, a wonderful backstory. Yeah. Competitors without a backstory tend to get edited out of the show, or maybe are online for a few seconds at the start of a segment, even if they win. Even if they get all the way through, <laughs> yes. It's like, sorry, no backstory. Yeah. <laughs> Moving on. So ABC wanted in on this action. They wanted in on the ninja bit, but they couldn't really do ninjas. <laughs> so they created Wipeout in 2008. This show mixed Ninja Warrior with the messiness of Nickelodeon's Double Dare with lots of mud, plus the mocking commentary of America's Funniest Videos, and it ran through 2014. Now, in my research, I found another show that came out earlier this year on Netflix I'd never heard of called Ultimate Beastmaster, which is clearly based on Ninja Warrior. See, and based on the name, I would have thought it was something else entirely. Yeah, yeah I, I assumed it was, you know, oh, you're going back to doing those Beastmaster. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so for Sylvester Stallone hosted and produced the 10 episode series which was shot all over the world with different local hosts. Now see that would be interesting. So I'm adding that to my list on Netflix. Oh. <laughs> well Mark is watching that. <laughs> you can check out our audio podcast How I Got My Wife to Read Comics on iTunes or on our website sfpodcastnetwork.com. From the Pop Culture Bunker, I'm Mindy. And I'm Mark. Thanks for watching. Off to YouTube.